welcome to another episode of Forever Stranded with Arturio Amaris. So, as you can see, I've been fairly busy the last couple episodes. I've been trying to get all of my farming needs out of the way. I made big planting areas for the, um, the primary Minecraft food crops. And that's because I can use these to make dirt and I'm going to constantly need dirt throughout this. Um, I did finally make a, a small planting area for melons and uh, pumpkins. And I just kind of came out of the hottest part of summer. So um, as you can see, the trees are starting to turn brown. So I'll need to uh, dig up the, uh, the Minecraft crops sooner. They're all die off. And um, during the hottest part of summer, um, I really have to spend a lot of time in my cooling room, otherwise I overheat and there's nothing to do down there other than sieve stuff. So I've been sieving, down here I mostly sieve sand, I did infested leaves and also um, regular leaves so that I could get the Pam's Harvest Craft Gardens to get as many crops as possible. I don't have all of them. If I understand correctly, there's 61 different plantable crops. Um, and I have one, two, three, four, five full. So five times nine is 45. And then this would be 49 and 50. So there's 11 more to get. And, you know, this is really kind of the only way to get them. And for the most part, I have pretty much everything I'm going to get, I'm probably going to have. Um, like these, I've got all of these. Um, rutabaga, beets, raspberry, peas. Yeah, I've, I've got all of these. Uh, what I still need is I need soybeans, which uh, soybeans are, are pretty useful. They make a, um, you can make milk and cheese and butter, and um, you used to be able to make all the different forms of meat out of them, out of uh, tofu, but I think they've changed that so that you can't, you can't substitute, oh, those are tropical gardens, um, you can't substitute the tofu directly for meat. Uh, where's cactus? Do I ha already have a full stack of cactus? Or is it over here? Yeah, cactus. And the tropical gardens... Tropical gardens. Okay, that won't, those won't plant on sand. I thought those would go on sand. Oh, did I just get soybeans? Those are sesame seeds, not soybeans. And I got bamboo, which I don't think I have bamboo. It can be hard to kind of remember what you have and what you don't when there's this many. And once or twice I planted something thinking like, oh, hey, I just got that. And then realized I already had it. Yeah, I don't think I have bamboo yet. Okay. Put the bamboo there, and the sesame seeds will go here. And uh, this other stuff, I don't know, maybe I'll eat some of it. Okay, it won't let me eat. So, a lot of things to talk about. We'll put what I can put away, and then the... Okay, those are not... I swear I thought I just opened those. I guess not. Alright, stuff to talk about. Um, first and foremost, I did finally make an auto-sieve. And it's not, you know, fully set up. I'm using the solar panels I got as a quest reward. Um, I amazingly still have dust in here from that huge backlog of dust because this really only runs at night. 
and um, it produces a good amount of stuff. I've actually taken things out of here and, and uh, cooked them once or twice. Um, and I've used quite a bit of iron, and I'll show you what I used it on. What I found out with this, these furnaces, they do produce heat when you're standing near them, when they're running. And each one that's running produces 10 units of heat. So if I have, like, there was one point where I had these all going, and my target heat was 90. <laughs> So you can't, you can't stand near here when you're doing this. I'm going to have to figure something out. You basically have to put stuff in the furnaces and then kind of run away. It just gets too hot to stand near it. Um, my water system here, this works really well. I can just throw cactus in here and this will automatically feeds it. It works really well. The, the system I was trying to set up for barrels for making dirt automatically, um, it, it does not work real well. For some reason... The transfer nodes in this version, whatever you put in them, it kind of sets. And so then nothing else will go through until you come through and kind of clear that by clicking on it. So I either have to reset this each time I change what goes into it, or I only put cactus in it. And also, it's so slow that if I had 16 of these, which is what I had, it'll basically fill the first one, and then they just they don't all kind of get filled. So... What I've been doing is I'm just putting the cactus in the chest and just letting it run and then getting the dirt out. Um, it's not as fast as I'd like. And that's why I put some of the barrels back in here for other crop types and, you know, to do things manually. That's my older dog, Cindy. She just came in from outside. She's all excited. All right. So, oh, that could have been bad. So this is the big construction project I worked on. Uh, I had the moat, and the moat made a good barrier, but it wasn't great for gathering stuff. So I was trying to use water source blocks to do this. And with the trapdoors, it actually kind of works relatively well. You know, they'll, uh, they'll path to me, and they think the trapdoors are a path and they'll step over. Now, I didn't want to do them around the entire length of the moat. It's too much wood and takes too much time. So, but once they fall down in there onto the punji sticks on top of the hoppers, it kills them very, very quickly. Um, it also produces squid. And if I kill the squid myself, I will get like calamari and squid food from them. But if the water washes them down here, um, I only get ink sacs and I have quite a bit of ink sacs at this point. What I found is when sandstorms come through, it deposits sand in here that disrupts the water. So I had to, I had to build one of these. Um, the weather deflector. And I haven't had a sandstorm since. So it, it's not terribly difficult to make. You have to make a weather item, which is a little bit of iron, a little bit of gold, and some redstone. And then the actual deflector is just a little bit more redstone and iron. So they're, they're not expensive. You just drop them down on the ground and they work. Um, and then down here, you know, this is pretty good for getting rotten flesh for making dirt. So I'm getting to the point now where I have a fairly stable existence here and I need to start making plans for exploring the ruins in the city. And we're not even to the hottest part of the day yet and I'm already starting to overheat. So yeah, stack and a half of ink sacks <laughs> since I built that. Um, I'm not sure where I'm keeping dirt right now, so I'll just hold on to it, I guess. All right. Uh, anyway. Oh, 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 the big thing I need to talk about. I finally figured out my resource pack issue that was causing all of the tough as nails mod items to be invisible. I finally fixed that. 
uh, yeah, here. Okay, so placeable sand layers, can see those now. I can see the thermometer I got as a quest reward forever ago. Uh, the jellied slime, the ice cubes, they're all visible now. And my armor is visible now, my jellied slime armor, which cools, which provides cooling. All right, let's see if we can get downstairs and cool off. So even though technically we're no longer in the hottest part of summer, um, it's, it's real easy to overheat even when you're not doing anything. So hopefully my temperature should come down a little bit. There we go. Uh, okay, right now it's the hottest part of the day. And this is the problem. Pretty much the only way I, I don't burn up right now. Um, is if I'm down here in my cooling area. So this is why I've been sieving down here. And unfortunately, if I go back upstairs, I'm just going to very quickly heat back up and start overheating again. So we'll just hang here for a minute and do a little bit of sieving and wait for the uh, temperature to come down. This is basically noon. So this is why I need to get um, working on some of the other technology. I, I need to sieve gravel to make diamonds, uh, to make a cooling system. Um, and I could do it by hand. I could place cobblestone and take a hammer and, and bash it with a hammer. But that's very, very slow, so I really need a pulverizer and something to power it. So that's what I'm going to be working on um, over the next bit of time. Um, but all that stuff takes power. And I get a little bit of power from the solar panels, but I don't get much. So let's look at pulverizers. So a little bit of glass, a tin gear, some iron for a machine frame. The tin gear is not bad. Okay, I think my temperature is down far enough. Missing items. What am I missing? Iron and tin. I've got iron and tin. Tin and iron. Okay, it's not pulling from the chest. Uh, okay, I think I have that backwards. So I don't have a huge supply of iron at the moment. And I think I think I made some glass. I don't have a lot, but I've got some. Hopefully I have enough iron to make Oh, I'm not sure I have any flint. Yeah, I don't think I have any flint, so I'm, I am going to have to do some manually. Um, because I believe that's the only way to get flint. Yeah, the sun's, sun's starting to set, so the temperature's coming down. gravel. We'll feed this through the auto sieve and see what we get. Um, up to this point I haven't sieved any gravel at all. So I don't have any diamonds, I don't have any emeralds, um, and from this little bit of gravel that I'm going to sieve I probably won't get any. But I think flint's a fairly common drop. So I cooled my temperature down to 18 and just that short amount of time brought me back up to the near burning point again. Back into the cooling room I go. <laughs> oh, okay, so that was the pulverizer and what I'm thinking of doing to power it 
is Sterling engines, Sterling generators, which are not terribly difficult to make. Um, it really only takes three pieces of iron to make this. You just have to have a lot of stone um, to make these other pieces. And they produce pretty good power. Um, I think the base ones are 20 RF a tick. So let's see. We're to that point where the sun is kind of three quarters of the way through the sky, so the temperature is now on the downward trend for the day. So I'll sieve up this little bit of sand here, and then uh, I'll go upstairs. Yep, and, okay, good, got some flint. And the sun set, so that stopped working. So I need to make sterling generators for that too. The solar panels are nice, but without a way to store power, um, you know, it doesn't really, they don't, they're not as useful as you might think they are. Okay, so I've got stone over here, and there should be some redstone in here. So we're going to make a bunch of those. And I think I need sticks, and I re need regular cobblestone. Yep, graphics for that working properly. I'm glad all of that, I was able to figure out how to do all that. Um, and honestly, I should have figured it out sooner. It's just, I thought I had done that already. Um, the way I fixed it was I went and downloaded a resource pack. And whenever I play, I load that resource pack and then I unload that resource pack. And whatever, somehow that reconfigures or um, reinitializes the, the actual texture packs for the mod pack and then they seem to work. Um, I have had that problem before, and in several other mod packs I've had to do that. But I really thought early on I had tried that and it didn't work, and that's why I hadn't had not done that up until now. Okay, cobblestone sticks. Um, I think this is where they go. Yeah, this will be enough for two sterling generators. Oh, wait. We'll make extras because I know we'll need these down the road. I have not made pistons yet. Okay. It's real easy to use up. I need more. I made so many furnaces. I ran out of cobble again. Okay, so pistons furnaces, stone blocks, and gears give sterling engines. All right, I need a redstone reception coil. And I need copper gears. Ah, okay, so I got to do the basic gear first. Do I've got sticks? Yeah, okay, so I'll need two of these. Wait, nope. And then I think, yeah, okay. Uh, what else? 
Oh, I only made one machine frame. And I need another, I need another piston. So basically, you're going to need a lot of pistons. Um, I only made one machine frame, and I don't have any glass, so we'll make, make that later. We'll just make one for now. I also made, only made one redstone reception coil, so. All right, pulverizer. Let's grab some charcoal. We'll put the pulverizer right there, and a Stirling engine on either side of it. There we go. And we have a functioning pulverizer. So these two, these are two of the three things that is going to be your primary port, primary ore processing system. A pulverizer to turn cobblestone into gravel, sand, and dust. An auto sieve to sieve so you don't have to. Um, and then you'll need a compressor of some sort to automatically combine the ore pieces. <laughs> It sounded like the shuttle coming in for a landing. So, so that was interesting, folks. Um, we just had a, a kind of a double boom that was very reminiscent of the shuttle coming in for a landing. But of course, it couldn't be that because the shuttles haven't taken off in years. So I don't know what that was. But it set the dogs off and... Oh wait, what's going on here? The pulverizer turns cobblestone into sand and a little bit of gravel. Oh, that's weird. How do I get just gravel? I guess the dogs decided it wasn't a big deal. I have to make a crusher and then it'll produce primarily gravel with a, a little bit of sand. Um, I could do the compressed hammer route, but I don't really have diamonds, so that's not an option. Sag mill. Um, ah, okay, I see. So if I take some of the cooked stone that I have, it'll make gravel. So I had cooked a bunch because I was planning on using it for Sterling engines. That's interesting. So anyway, we were looking at um, uh, yeah, auto compressors are what I need and. So that'll take 13 pieces of iron, and I don't think I have 13 pieces of iron left. I think I used... Yep. So I'll have to process some more to do that later. Alrighty, we're going to call the episode there. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got some inf interesting information out of it, and I hope it helps your gameplay. If it did, uh, it would be great if you could leave a like on the video, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it would be even better if you could subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them on YouTube and I will respond when I can. Thank you for watching. This is Arturio Maris signing out.